Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking some time to attend our webinar. My name is Darren. I'm from the Industrial Equipment Manufacturing, classified as IEM, under Avantec IIoT Singapore. Some self-introduction of myself. I came from a sales engineering background. I've been with Avantec for the past three years. I specialize in industry C and automation field product, which brings us to our main focus topic of today. We are going to introduce the Avantec Ethercat and Amex series real-time I.O. product. Let's begin. When we speak of IoT, we always come across with the term of Industrial 1.0 to Industrial 4.0. Right now, factories are undergoing a new revolution transition, and we are focusing on the revolution transition of Industrial 3.0 over to 4.0. The differences between 3.0 and 4.0 is one emphasized on efficiency and production scale, which is under 3.0, and customization availability on 4.0. In this revolution of 4.0, the big keyword will be big data and cloud-based. This means that automation system will acquire or generate more and more data on a field site, require multiple communication solution to transfer data over to the cloud platform. Avantech key direction is for the near future, is all about providing a product solution to help customer migrate over to this new era smoothly. Here, we are able to see an important paradigm shift caused by this new revolution of Industrial 4.0. Majority field sites are have, still having or using traditional controller PLC that has limitation on the communication and data handling. These two key features component are very important when it comes to industrial 4.0 application. Most popular solution to cater for this migration is a two component solution, which is a PLC plus a gateway IPC concept. Having a gateway IPC on top of the PLC layer is a common practice for engineers to incorporate. However, there are challenges for this type of implementation. Engineer needs to face or put in more effort on handling the interface communication between those two devices. Plus, they have to tackle the space constraint challenges when doing so due to the size of the gateway IPC. Smaller gateway IPC is available in the market. However, the CPU processing power for large data processing is being bottlenecked down only as a communication gateway IPC only. This restriction has caused the number of running application to be supported by this PC, and also the computing power is commonly on an Atom or Celeron processor. Through the evolution of semiconduct technology, CPU have become more and more powerful. Some may wonder, why not use the extra CPU resources to have a traditional PLC task? Another common thought is, why not just build a powerful CPU onto this kind of controller form factor. That is the evolution of the next generation controller, which we call it PAC. A PAC is actually a PC-based controller that allows integration with many standard software or hardware components by application. Also, in a business point of view, this provides a chance to decouple the ecosystem of traditional PLC. Other than PAC controller, Application may require real-time I.O. system to be replaced by a time-deterministic I.O. of traditional PLC. In the field of automation, there are many kinds of fuel bus technology available in the market. However, Avatech chose to follow the trend of Ethercat due to its powerful features and will provide a series of products to fulfill the real-time I.O. requirement for smart factory transformation. Most applicable implementation of Ethercat technology are on the fuel level, connecting and transferring data with the end or slave devices, even actuator. Usually, it can fulfill all the requirements for machine automation and become the only one master fuel bus in a machine. 
Sometimes it can also be the master bus to collect data in the factory floor due to its flexibility topology and big amount of I.O. handle capability. Now the question, why Ethercat? Ethercat, this term, is derived from Ethernet Control Automation Technology and is an open field bus stand owned by Ethercat Technology Group. To answer this question, to why Avantech, all you should look into this technology, requires four main key features of Ethercat, which is high, higher performance, distributed clock, flexibility in wiring topology, and cable redundancy. So first will be the higher performance. From this chart, we can easily realize Ethercat has an outstanding performance on I.O. handling compared with the famous Ethernet-based field bus. We also learned that this data, from this data, that Ethercat can handle huge amount of I.O. in a very short time. Second is the distributed clock. This is a very important feature of Ethercat. In the industrial equipment environment, there are usually many moving parts to be handled in the production process, and they need to be very precise and efficient. Those process requires very precise synchronization, moving step to the process and in the right position and timing. This chart shows that the Ethercat is capable of synchronized clock precision in a big amount of device with a low jitter. Avantech Ethercat devices comes with standard Ethercat stack that will essentially equip these features. Third is the flexible wiring topology. In the factory, as we mentioned, we we'll have more sensing device in the floor, factory floor. Different application on the field site may require different wiring topologies to be fulfilled. From this diagram, we can see that Ethercat is flexible enough to support each kind of topology, such as, such as line, daisy chain, and star. This flexibility allows engineer, engineering implementation more easy and also helps in terms of management and maintenance. Later, we will introduce our AMAX 4870, which is an Ethercat junction module that can help user to build up a star topology of Ethercat network easily. Last is the cable redundancy. System availability is very important. Ethercat provides easy configuration for user to achieve cable redundancy. User only need to connect the end device of the Ethercat network to the other port of the Ethercat and activate the cable redundancy option. While a cable or device within the Ethercat network has failed, the data traffic will return to the master via the other direction. These features will keep the system running while minimize the damage of the whole system. Avatech have dedicated team for the technology of remote I.O. Our HQ engineers leverage the similar I.O. technology to fulfill the data digitalization and transformation of different protocols with a wide range of products starting from our Adam 4000 series for fulfilling the SCADA system requirement and supporting RS485 plus Modbus polling. Next, we have our Adam 6000 series, which is the Ethernet Remote I.O. supporting Ethernet and Modbus TCP. The next layer, we have our Apex 5000 series for the real-time I.O. solution with a one uh, millisecond real-time requirement. And to our latest edition, we have our Amex 5000 and Amex 4800 series using Ethercat to provide the next range of real-time I.O. system with 100 microsecond real-time requirement. Amex series Ethercat remote I.O. not only equipped with real-time bus, but it also leverages on the latest technology of sensing with wider coverage to all kinds of applications. With the new thread 
trend of the industrial 4.0, the I.O. requirement will become larger in the field site. Real-time remote I.O. can release the CPU from communication pooling of big data, as well as the data will also return to the master within a given cycle time automatically. Let's dive into the spotlight of the day. Our AMX 5000 is a series of products, including the AMX 5580 PAC controller and WISE 5400 series IO PCIe expansion and AMX 5000 series Ethercat Slice IO. So these three items combined becomes our AMX 5000 series. On the right section, of the AMX 5580, which is the controller. User can slide in our AMX 5400 series PCIe IO expansion. We'll provide more details on this expansion. Left of the AMX 5580, our AMX 5000 series Ethercat slice IO can be inserted on the right side. With the Ethercat bus coupler, AMX 5074. Utilizing AMX 5000 series slice IO, it can be connected on both ends as shown in the picture. This configuration shows a lot of flexibility, which can be used as an IO expansion of the PAC and the Intercat remote IO on the remote side. So let's look at into the remote IO architecture. We provide two forms of Ethercat remote I.O. modules. AMX 5000 series I.O. module, starting with a bus coupler, AMX 5074, which can be installed high density mixed slice I.O. in a small area. On the other hand, our AMX 4800 series is a terminal board type standalone module with fixed I.O. number and high CPE ratio. Although both are different form factors, those two series both equip standard Ethercat slave stack and can work with third party Ethercat master or work with other third party Ethercat devices within the same network. For the AMX 5000 Ethercat slice IO module, the following features are engineering friendly design. It provides two removable push in terminal in one module. Easy for engineer to wire the I.O. on the upper lower duct in the control panel. The front LED indicator and wiring instruction are on the slice I.O. module, which help engineer on the system setup and maintenance. It also comes with dual power input, which allow user to wire in a backup power to increase the system availability. Next, we have the slim size module. Within one point with slice I.O., it allows user to equip more I.O. within a limited space. Our intelligent function, no matter Max 5000 or Max 4800, both are on the standard Ethercat stack. That means all the I.O. system can behave like an eBus product of back off I.O. No extra configuration utility is required. All the I.O. can be configured in the Ethercat master user interface like Codices or Twincat. Within the same environment, it provides user a maintenance page for firmware update. And last, we have our advanced DAQ data acquisition. The last one, Amex 5000 leverage the latest technology of data acquisition provided the basic 100 hertz per channel sampling rate for analog input module. For the analog output module, we provide the adjustable SU rate and read back function. All the analog input and output module are now with better resolution and accuracy. A series of AMAX 5000 product has been released, including digital input output, analog input output module, as well as counter encoder module for position measurement. Those modules can fulfill most 
general automation requirement in the field site. Advantage leverages the latest technology and consolidate many I.O. range within one module. This provides good flexibility for engineers to implement and reduce the I.O. skill in a project. We are still on the way to develop new modules for special application. Currently, the latest release module is the DI and DO with timestamp under our AMX 5051 Tango and 5056 Tango. Those modules are designed for application which need digital I.O. trigger at an accuracy within 0 0.5 microsecond. We take the advantage of distributed clock of EtherCAD and provide the precise timestamp to a digital input and output. Some advanced application, which needs the synchronized output or precise event input. Those modules can provide the more precise operation in spite of the limitation of the control cycle time. We will take more time to look at how it works and when to use the Amex 5051 Tango and 5056 Tango on the next following slide. Before introducing the principle of Amex 5051 Tango and 5056 Tango, we have to understand how traditional EtherCAD digital I.O. module works. Let's look at the animation shown in my slide. In this example animation, a sensor status is required to read the oncoming object on the conveyor belt via the digital input module. The object on the conveyor will change the sensor logic label to a high value upon detection via the laser sensor while the object is passing through. By traditional principle of EtherCAD, the data is transmitted segmentally similar to a train picking up passenger at each station. Each white dot on the example in the animation represents a slave module. And each segment shall be a detection station where the data is exchanged or updated segment by segment. The yellow dot represents the data frame on that segment when it's exchanging data within that cycle. On the traditional digital input module, the slave module acquires instant DI status when the data frame passes through the slave module. There, the status of the sensor can be sent back to the master upon the arrival of the data frame or at a later stage. Most of the time, this method works fine when the cycle time is shorter than the signal duration. However, there's a problem. When the cycle time is longer than the signal duration, we will have another issue, which I'll show in my next slide. Here we can see that the object is shorter than the previous example. In this example, the object create a much shorter event signal duration comparing to the data frame sequence cycle. The sensor signal status has changed back to a low value before the cycle arrived. This resultant a trigger event miss detection. The trigger will be missed. This is a clear example when the event is too short and the object will be missed detected. One of the solution to resolve this situation is to shorten the cycle time. But at times due to the limitation of the minimum shorter cycle duration, which can be controlled or fit within the timing of the rate of the belt. The number of slave devices on the EtherCAD bus contribute to the cycle time as well. Therefore, it will be a very challenging task for the engineer to fine tune the system. Now let's look at our digital output. In this application, there are two digital output modules that requires to control the cutting sequence on the conveyor belt. This needs to be cut simultaneously and precise position on the material. But the signal has a long delay time from slave to slave 
which cause an unsynchronized output. In this precise sensitive application, the solution is by changing the detection session from a cycle base to a time base. By the principle on the distributed clock mechanism, it is one of the powerful features of EtherCAD. Every segment slave in the EtherCAD module has a high precision clock built in. This allows a synchronized time with the master controller as a 64 bit value timestamp with a resolu resolution of one nanosecond. With these features, instead of exchanging the digital status of the module, exact of the time event shall be exchanged. Let's take a look on how it works. Similar to the initial DI example before, the, synchroniz the synchronization is done before the test. The sensor status is required to be recorded and sent back to the master. On this example, using timestamp, before the data frame sequence cycle arrive, the digital input module has recorded the T1 timestamp and T2 timestamp with the respective status value. When the data frame sequence meets the digital input module, the recorded T1 and T2 will be exchanged and brought back to the master. With this method, signal changes or trigger point will not be missed. And the num module on the EtherCAD bus should not be affected as well. Now let's compare on the digital output. Similar to the digital output, the first, first the slave module has to be synchronized with the time on the master. Second, the master will indicate specific T1 timestamp that both DO is required to be triggered. This information of the indicated timestamp will be transported to the digital output module. Upon the present time has come, both DO will be triggered in accordance to the timestamp set simultaneously. This allows precise trigger on multiple DO and no delay to be occurred. In summary, to the benefit of the AMX 5051 Tango and 5056 Tango timestamp module, by changing the data acquisition mechanism from a cycle base to a time base, the IO signal can be triggered between cycle. From this, we can approach as a precise digital input and output with a delay shorter than 0 0.5 microsecond and a resolution of one nanosecond. For application that requires deterministic digital input and synchronized digital output, it can be achieved. When the, digit, when the data acquisition is released from the cycle, it is less affected by the system sequence or other slave module within the network. It becomes more flexible for any application configuration. Now you have a better understanding of the Amex 5051 Tango and 5056 Tango. Let's dive into the EtherCAD Remote I.O. architecture. AMX 4800 series is a standalone EtherCAD I.O. module. Unlike AMX 5000 series, which has a flexible I.O. configuration, AMX 4800 series is fixed I.O. point as shown in the table. It features high density I.O., more cost effective. The same as AMX 5000 series, AMX 4800 series also equip Removable, removable push in terminal, front LED, and dual power input. X4800 series and 5000 series can work in the same EtherCAD network, and user can choose the best combination according to their requirement of application. Let's take an example if user needs to have 40 DI and 24 DO in a system. 
they can have a combination with all AMAX 4800 or, or with AMAX 5000 series or a combination of both. User can, user can make a table and select the best fit solution. And in this case, AMAX 5000 have the best price and occupy the smaller space of width. As mentioned in previous page, Ethercad can support many kinds of wiring topology. Our AMAX 4870 has one input and five output junction module, which can help user to transfer the line topology to a star topology easily. Traditional Ethercad topology is a line topology in which all I.O. module are in a line one after the other. The disadvantage of this is when one module down is down, it will affect all other module afterwards. In some cases, user may require one Ethercad master to control several production lines and some production line may need to be shut down manually for some reason. This junction module can separate each I.O. sets in different branches and can help user achieve this object easily. Here's an example application for a CNC woodworking. Below is a very typical application for Ethercad in the field of traditional machine maker. User is a woodworking CNC machine maker who needs to upgrade their traditional machine specification to support multiple station. The old approach is to add three individual CNC controller and will cost a lot. In the end, user has chosen one of our codices PAC MX5580 and with the Ethercad to extend the motion component and I.O. devices to the three working station. This approach not only saves customer costs, but also facilitate user to build up the upstream communication to the MES system. Thanks to the powerful CPU, the efficiency has dramatically upgraded. Users are able to solve some puzzle by using codices and code support. Another example application for IT, OT, AOL system. In the modern equipment for electronics manufacturing, user can leverage on the Ethercad to realize multi-axis control. In this application, the customer would like to build up an AI, uh, AOI system for color filter. The system needs to work with some subsystem and control many axes to finish the manufacturing process. Traditional solution is used by using IPC, and PLC, and the customer experience hard time for the communication interface. Not only on the technical interface, but also in the communication interface for two working group. Finally, they chose the codices PAC MX5580 as the controller and the Ethercad bus as the real time communication bus with the end devices. According to the manager, this approach saves 50% development time and increase the system efficiency by four times. Ethercad is a very practical real-time bus for automation, and Avantech will dedicate and develop more product and application in the world of Industrial 4.0. So I finished my presentation slide. We'll move on over to a live demonstration. Uh, can I just quick check? Can you see the video feed? OK, so over here I have the actual device within our office. So this is how the Adam, the Wise, uh, sorry, the MX 5580 looks like physically. So it's quite compact and small. This is the PC portion over here. So we open up the chassis to showcase the motherboard inside. Within the motherboard, we have many expansion slots available. So over here we have serial COM port, display port, two display port via HDMI. We have two Ethernet port and four USB port. Within the board itself, 
we have this mini PCI, which is we, we have added in our MV RAM and our M SATA storage. So this is the top view. The power is connected via this black pin. Is it focus? Okay. So over here are the power. With the casing, it looks like this. And on the side, we have the pin to connect the slice I.O. module over here. And on the left, we have the mini PCIe expansion. This is the connector slot. So how it works is that we can customize the individual slice O according to your requirement. So we have an example. Let me take out one. So over here, I'm sure you can see. We have our Amex 5001 power input module and DI. So you can see here we have two sections. One is in the top and one at the bottom. The bottom is the IO and the top is the power. The power diagram is located within the, on the side of the slice IO where engineer can refer to the diagram on the voltage in, voltage out and the individual IO. This connector point is to connect to a secondary slice I.O. Over here. So that's how they get connected with each other within the PSC controller. So you can slot, slot in, in just like that. And you can customize the configuration whichever you need. Can you see? Is it still lagging? Yes, Next, here we have our Amex 5079, which is the Ethercat extension. So this particular module helps to connect to an Ethercat coupler over here. So these two are being established to separate out. Okay, can you see here? So normally how it works is that we will connect this module over here and we will use a LAN cable, extend this coupler, to a separate location within your field. So all these can be connected and controlled. So they will be acting as a master and all those are your slave devices. So you can have multiple stacks. It's supported up to six, five, five, three, four addresses of safe address. So you can connect a, quite a lot of slice IO onto this module. The next thing is that the powder power. Over here, the power, we have two separate power. So one power is actually for the PC. The other power is actually for the IO module. You can connect a single power over to this module. It will supply power to the rest of the slice IO respectfully. But this itself will have, it requires its own power source as well also on here. And it will provide power to your slave IO. 